Hi, I'm Richard Leach, Managing Partner of One Performance Outcome. We help our clients to close the gap between what their people can do and what they must do to deliver the organisation's goals. This video is about high performance cultures and seven principles that can really drive sustained change in organisations. Does your organisation really have clarity about what it's there to do? Does everybody in the organisation know how they fit into that? It's not always the case. In many organisations, it is absolutely not the case. And it doesn't have to be the big organisations that find this more difficult. This is where we get down to things like having a vision, having a mission. We're going to come on to values later, actually. And little planning processes like OGSP, Objectives, Goals, Strategies, Plans. The way you cascade the vision, the mission, the objectives downwards is absolutely critical to getting everybody crystal clear. Now, it's teaming, not teams. Sometimes you are operating as a team, and that's how you function. Sometimes you come together with a group of people to deliver a common goal, but you're not necessarily a team. But you still have to have a propensity to team. You have to come together for the duration of that project. I guess most of you have got projects going on as well as line management responsibility <coughs> at work. So think about teaming. In particular, the most senior team. Do they lived and breathed every day? <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy, is it? It's easy to write them down. It's not so easy to get them launched and lived in the organisation. And this is where we, we say that every manager is in some way a leader. And the challenge is to work out for managers what that means. When you think about communications, I would say try and do things differently. When we launched the values at, at Jagex, we actually ran a series of management conferences for them and did something, it's very games industry, it's all dark and moody as you can see from the photos. But actually, the communications were multifaceted to where they could actually say, this is what it is, this is what it means for us as a team. And they went away from there, it was only a three hour session, with very clear action plans about what they were going to do differently as a team. So it starts out as communication, very quickly onboarded them, very quickly got into action. I think high performance comes through agility. Why? Because the route from A to B is rarely linear. Because it might take you 12, 18 months to get from culture A to culture B. So it's unlikely that other things aren't going to change in your world as you're on that journey. And the speed of change is dictated not by competitors, but by leaders, actually. You have got some element of control over this through the culture that you create. And we say, think a lot about agility. Use agility in a way that means that you can move with vigour and pace, but you can also duck and weave on the way. American companies mainly that have really, really ruthless ways of handling poor performance. But actually what they've done is created a culture of not tolerating poor performance. And they've actually enabled themselves to keep moving forward through that. Now, the way we have to do that in, in Western Europe is fundamentally through setting really clear goals and using our PDR and appraisal processes as well as we can. But then we come back to this bit of, yeah, but most managers don't want to use the PDR tools. They'll find any number of excuses not to do it. The challenge is the cultural bit, getting managers to want to do this, not have to do this. That will be the thing that really makes a difference, make it relevant to them, make them understand what the consequence of poor performance is.